Hey everyone, it's Clive Vibrant Soap and finally back for a new video. I know it's been a long time, but the holidays plus coming back from that European trip really kind of set me back a bit, so I was playing a game of catch up. But anyway, I wanted to show you something different this time, change the way I talk about color tutorials and everything, and I decided that I'm going to uh, wait until after I've made the soap. This is the soap that I'm going to be um, talking to you about today. This is a the latest version of Lemon Lime Sublime. And that's the focus of my video today is how do you make the decision on whether to change the colors of your soap and the design of your soap uh, each and every time you do it? Um, because there's this fine line of um, customers getting used to a favorite soap or, you know, do you um, change it up all the time? So what I've kind of decided to do is to retain something of the original design in the subsequent soaps that I make um, of that same fragrance. It's been a favorite and I really like the fresh mix of uh, scents in this one. And I wanted to capture the with the colors the, the scent involved with this too. That's always the way that I start the design uh, focus of the soaps. So through time, and I'll show you the pictures of these, you'll see there's at least four different versions here. This one was, I think, back in 2013. Um, and then I have one from 2014, 15, 16, and then the one that I just showed you in 2018. And I've made it several times beyond that. So I think I've um, changed the design that many times. Um, you'll see that I started off with such a, an interest in what these micas were doing that I decided a long time ago to make kind of a carnival-like color. The colors were strong. And what I've noticed through time is that, you know, that really doesn't suit my taste anymore. I want to make something more subtle and something a little bit more fine-tuned and something that's not going to bleed as much because there's not an overuse of micas. So, so I wanted to show you first this old chocolate case. It's an antique now, Fry's Chocolate. There's some connection between that and Cadbury, but I'm um, so lucky that I inherited this and it really does showcase some of my old soaps that I used to. Who, keep, who does that? Who keeps all their old soap? So I've never showed a detail of this, but uh, now I have a reason to show this off. I um, inherited this case. Um, I think it's officially an antique, but uh, uh, I looked it up once and found that many people are collecting them. But uh, I really thought this was a beautiful case, and I thought, you know, this would be a great place to keep some of my soaps that I've made. So I have a bit of a record and I used to be a little bit more diligent in keeping at least one from every loaf but I, I kind of gave up on that because I just started to make so many and I would need a big giant chocolate case for them but here's looking into the past and the reason why we're looking in this is so that I can excavate um, let me try to undo the latches and the back so now the back opens up and I'm looking for this one right here can I do this as I'm in front of it no I can't so I'll be right back okay so I got this one out of there this is a real early version if not the first version of Lemon Lime Sublime, and somehow, you know, I wasn't very um, into soap making yet when I came across um, mixing some fragrance oils, and it just turned out to be such a great fragrance. I think I've made this five times already, um, but this is probably from around 2013, I'm guessing, and since then I've had different versions of that, and I don't think I've saved... The other versions of it so anyway the back opens up and then there's this mirror that goes up and it latches so then we'll get back to the rest of the video okay so here are my oils and my clay kaolin clay 
and I'm going to add my lye to that. Got sodium lactate in there too. But I think I'm going to strain that. I had some stubborn soap threads that didn't want to dissolve. I don't want that in the soap. So there's my main mix, and I'm going to add my fragrance, my own special blend of lemon, lime, and other great stuff that makes this really special. This is the fourth or fifth time that I've altered this design. And that's all emulsified. And I made a stronger bit of yellow. I've got this light green. I don't probably have as much of that as I do with the yellow. But the dark green is going to be more of an accent, so I just want a little bit of that. And I've altered this design to have a lighter purple. So I'm going to add some titanium dioxide to that. And the rest of the titanium dioxide is going to go in my base. And it's okay if it's a little bit of a yellowish base. I didn't have much titanium dioxide because it's, um, I'm going to have a deep yellow in this recipe also, in this design. And because of that, it's going to make a pale yellow almost look like white. And let's blend everything, starting with the white. Okay, so those colors turned out the way I wanted them. And this white is um, plenty white enough. It's a little whiter than a cream, so that's going to look like a nice white. Stirring this really thoroughly really helps a lot. Especially if you blend in a shallow container, you tend to get a lot of bubbles in the mix, so that tells you you've got to stir those a little bit more unless you don't mind the bubbles. Okay, so I'll just tell you a little bit more of my plan. I always um, think about the title of my soap and the design of the soap, and this time I decided that I'm going to have a drizzle on top of gold, and I thought that that color of gold, it's on the redder side of gold, would be a nice drizzle on top because the name of the soap is Lemon Lime Sublime. And I always think, what is the sublime part? Well, I do know that it's the fragrance involved that I've named the sublime part after, but um, the design part should, I think, reflect the scent as well. So the gold is gonna be my sublime part of my design. So, um, let me think about what I'm doing here. I'm going to start with this white base, and I'm going to drop in my lavender color first, and I'm going to do that in three main areas of the batter, the base, keep some for the top, and because yellow is the opposite, the complementary color for purple, that's going to look nice right in there. It's almost like I'm doing three funnel pours within the big scheme of things. The green, the dark green will look nicer right up next to that yellow. So I'm going to add that. Put some of that in the middle. So I do have my previous versions of this, Lemon Lime Sublime, so you can find that, but I'll add two of the links to the two most recent versions of Lemon Lime Sublime, putting a little bit in the three areas where I poured the purple and yellow, 
and the rest will be in its own little space. Okay, so let's pour this thing and you'll see what happens. And that nice color is just going to swirl all by itself in there for me in a really nice pattern. It's going to be a random pattern, but I really do like the randomness of this particular pour. It's a little more intricate. And that's kind of how I enter, I, that's how I um, altered this design as well. I used to have a dark purple, but since I have a dark green, I didn't want to have a dark green and a dark purple because I really wanted only one dark accent color. So everything else is similar in value or lighten the lightness or darkness of the design. The only darker value one is the dark green. And lavenders and purples look just so super together. We tap soap to get the bubbles out, so that's what I'm doing. And let's see, let me start with this lime color. the dark green. Uh, I mixed this with three different types of yellow plus I made it a little stronger so it doesn't fade to nothing with the rest of the colors showing but this one not. So these are the kind of things that you pick up through time and knowing your ingredients. You guys have any colors that fade on you that you compensate by using more? I bet you do. I'm being intentional with the order that I put on top too. Since this purple used to be the part of my design that was represented the sublime or special part, um, I'm going to put that on um, now so that it gets hidden under my other colors when I finish doing the top. And then I'm going to finish everything off with that Gold drizzle. Guess what I'm trying to say is that the order that you put in your colors makes a difference. Well, this smells good. I haven't made this in a while, but uh, it's a very bright fragrance with some notes that add a little more body to the scent. And it has been a favorite. I just um, try not to make the same thing all the time. And that gives me more practice coming up, up with other designs. And I think that's more interesting to my YouTube subscribers as well. You let me know. I'm sure you don't want to see the same things over and over again or do you like seeing just a little tweak on designs as I come up with a different type of design for the same type of soap? And you think of your client base and if they get a particular favorite of yours but you don't make it for a long time that might not be a good thing. So my way of making the same soap uh, at least on YouTube, is to tweak the design a little bit so that there's uh, a little different way of looking at it. And then I'm going to swirl the top one direction only. For now. Then I'm going to drizzle the gold on top of that. It makes it look very rich. Wow, look at that. Just so cool. Okay. Now I'm going to take my chopstick and swirl it in the other diagonal. That's what it looks like. 
This one needs some glitter too, so I'm gonna spray that with some glitter. And then show that to you. Yep, I like that. Okay, we'll come back for the cut. Okay, so let's see how this newest version turned out. Basically all I did was combine the colors a little differently and I made the green the dark accent as opposed to the purple. And I made the yellow a little more pronounced in this one too. Bars a little bigger too. I'm starting to cut those a little larger. And I've got to show you the gold top on that too. It's good to change things up. I like the yellows and purples in that one. Yeah, and I really feel that the white sets things off, separates some of the colors. So you can look back at the other times that I've made Lemon Lime Sublime. It's one of my favorites and it um, has really sold. It's one of my favorites and it has really sold well. But you can see how I changed the design. And there's the last one. I'll cut the other one. It's a little smaller than the rest of the slices into sample sizes. That one has more yellow. And thank you so much. Um, I guess I'm thanking you for all of 2017 for watching the videos and your comments and subscribing. And I hope to make a lot of new friends and subscribers in 2018 as well. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, um, I'm going to try to make one every week, if not every two weeks, because uh, I've been busy with some things here, and um, that slows me down. But uh, try to keep up with uh, the videos by subscribing, and then you'll get a notification that a new video is out. And thanks again, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye.